प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जे ह नजर समीप रहो अमारी ए ह नजर समीप रहो अमारी ए ह गणेशम आराध नीजे हरि कृष्ण महाराज नीजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान नीजे Supreme Almighty our dear utmost beloved Gansham Maharaj pathmaker to our liberation our dear Pooja Guru ji Pooja Santo and all of you loyal dham parivar bhakto jai swami narayan as we continue on our journey through this yoga course we come to yoga course number 7 where there is three components that are part of this course first and foremost the vachanam gadada first chapter 38 second sadguru shri gunati tanan swamini vato prakaran 1 vat number 237 and finally anadi mukta sura khachar of loya dham his charitra these three components we want to dissect one by one and analyze what bhagwan has to say about each and every aspect and principle so without further ado let's, let's get started kadada first chapter 38 a merchant's balance sheet this is the vacharamut's title now shri ji maharaj and his paramanso the four of them sadguru shri muktanand swami or adi guru sadguru shri gunatitanand swami sadguru shri nityanand swami and sadguru shri shukanand swami while composing this divine vachana amrut they extracted and titled each and every vachana amrut according to the main essence of the talk that shri ji maharaj delivered but the santos vision was different from the world these santos thinking process was different from the world these santos perspective on looking at spirituality looking at how uh the world sees or the people see the world compared to them was different now from that aspect this title of the vachanamrut is very unique where nan santo have pointed out regarding some worldly aspect of a merchant or a businessman and his income outcome balance sheet in total they what these santos did was they lived in this on this earth for 50 60 70 80 years and from there they related with the world they talked with the people of the world they did everything with the world yet they were different from the world they were they were and they are in nadi muktos yet when they came on this earth they took the world and turned the world into an example and kind of weaved it into spirituality this is kind of a technique of the great sant or the great sadhu the ekantik satpurush it cannot be done by everyone taking worldly examples taking examples of the world and inserting spirituality into it and using it to explain to the jeevs or the souls of the world is something what the great satpurush does and gunatitanand swami has done it throughout his vato gopan swami has done it throughout his vato so on and so forth but shri ji maharaj here does it in numerous times you can say in the vachanamrut using different examples of a worm and bee using examples of a king using an example of flowers and sesame seeds that we'll see in this watch i'm using examples of lemons using examples of rice and chana or we can say beans using examples of 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 swords anything and everything and infusing spirituality into it 
so that the ordinary human, the ordinary soul, can understand the mo utmost, highest gnan, highest knowledge, spiritual knowledge, spiritual wisdom ever to even the most ordinary soul. This is what Bhagwan Swami Narayan did. This is what his Nan Santo did. And we want to learn from an ordinary example how we can change and make our life extraordinary. So let's get into it. Introduction. So as all of you know, this Vachramrita always starts out with a starting paragraph. And let's read it over. Swami Narayan Hare, on the evening of Mahashud, Summit 1876, American date January 16th, 1820, Sriji Maharaj was sitting on a small mattress which had been placed on the veranda outside the stables in the Adhakachar's Darbar in Gadara. He is wearing a white case and had tied a white, red-bordered feto around his head. He was also wearing a richly embroidered angarku and had covered himself with a thick, white cotton cloth. At that time, an assembly of sadhus as well as devotees from various places had gathered before him. So this, uh, the scene is set now, and we would like to get into the principles of Bhagwan Swami Nara and what he has to say um, regarding this merchant's balance sheet example. After glancing at all of the devotees, Sriji Maharaj thought, for a considerable length of time and said, you know, uh, one of the characteristics of God, as we see here, and of the Ekantik Sat Purush is when they want to say something um, which is a little on the serious side, uh, which is a little bit uh, more on the side where uh, they want to implement a little more weight, um, they think uh, for an excessive period of time they may close their eyes and then they just say few words but those few words are so effective to the soul that only when one experiences one can understand that uh, only Bhagwan or his Ekatnik Satpurush could deliver such kind of talks and the soul transforms into uh, a mukt slowly but surely so Bhagwan waited and then he said please listen I have something to say he then continued, from the time a satsangi enters the satsang fellowship, he should examine his mind by thinking. In the first year, my mind was like this, then it was like this. Previously, I had this much desire for the God and this much desire for the world. And in this manner, he should repeatedly reflect on this yearly total of desires and always strive to gradually yet constantly er eradicate all worldly desires that remain in his mind stop right there so from the time a satsangi enters the satsang fellowship some have been satsang for one month some six months some one year some two years five years ten years fifteen years twenty years twenty five thirty forty even fifty years some have been satsang, have been born into satsang ever since a young age for 50 years. Now, in that span, Bhagwan is saying that ever since you entered satsang from day one, what should you do? Examine your mind. Now, you know, there is many things to examine in this world. Even in chemistry labs and biology labs, there's many things to examine. And our professors and teachers teach us this, but they never teach us how to examine our mind. Something which has never been even heard of, something which is completely beyond this world, examining one's mind. What is that? How can that be done? What is the exact way? And why should one do it? These are some questions that arise. Now, examining the mind is something which is a perspective of a devotee, which is called antardrashti, or looking within oneself, one's positives, negatives, kind of weighing it out, 
seeing how one's mind is behaving, thinking, what kind of thoughts one is having. And after that, slowly but surely turning it the right direction. One thing that our Puja Guruji always says is the mind can never be destroyed. The mind can never be stopped. But the mind can always be diverted into positive directions so that one can lead a spiritual life, a healthy spiritual life and attain Bhagwan. That can definitely be done. Destroying the mind, trying to stop the mind, that's something which is not possible for any humans to do. That's only in Bhagwan's hands. But to divert the mind in a positive way is definitely in the hands of a satsangi, a human. And it can be done. Now, Bhagwan is saying that one should examine one's mind by thinking. Now, this is the way Bhagwan is teaching us. That, and the way Bhagwan teaches us is the right way. The way that we want to do it is not the right way or proper way. So, whatever way Bhagwan teaches us, if we imply our mind or thought process in that way, then we would become like Bhagwan Swaminarayan wants us to become like and attain and live in it in his akshar dham for countless countless yugs or ages let's put it that way in the first year my mind was like this then it was like this previously i had this much desire for god and this much desire for the world now one can definitely tell that you know before i had a, a very intense craving for tasty foods but ever since i uh, entered the satsang fellowship before i used to eat outside fast foods i very much liked it one in in one week i would eat two to three times i could not live without my favorite restaurants or fast food places but ever since i started to go to mandir started to uh, you know engage with santos every on a weekly basis after a couple of months it went by, after a couple of years went by, all that started to shed away. And if you look and think, if one does go to Mandir, if one does perform Sant Samagam, one's mind is guaranteed to change. That is the Pratap or that is you can say the power of Satsang. According to the Vachnarut Bhagwan Swaminarayan says, if one performs Satsang with wholeheartedly love and listens to the Kathavarta of the Satpurush, then one's mind's thoughts become very, very, you can say suppressed and one becomes free from all desires. This is the Pratap or the power of Satsang. This is how strong Satsang is. So Bhagwan Swaminarayan is saying that in the first year, my mind was like this. Now it's like this previously, I had this much desire for God and this much desire for the world. Now, here's the very important part. Bhagwan is only making two comparisons. And from this, he is teaching us what he wants us to do. Previously, I had this much desire for God and this much desire for the world. Bhagwan is putting God on one scale, the world on the other scale. Now it's a balance game balancing which one outweighs the other which one has more you can say uh which one is more infused in one's life god god meaning everything then satsang seva reading scriptures sun samagam uh everything bhakti uh doing everything for the sake of pleasing god that is all related to god that's one side the world is everything else you know, uh, um, enjoying fast foods, uh, you know, enjoying uh, electronic devices, uh, cars, clothes, engrossed in watching movies and, and going out with friends and all that, so on and so forth. That's all part of the world. Now, Bhagwan is only stating two things he wants us to do. His most deepest, you can say, principle is to attain him let's put it that way now that's why he's stating and only making two kinds of comparisons i had this much desire for god and this much desire for the world now what what do we have to do how much desire do we have towards god 20 percent? how much 
desire do we have for the world? 80%. Now from that 20 and 80, we'll have to slowly start to start to shift the, the, you can scale and go 30, 40, 50, 60 towards God and lessen the desire for the world, 80, 70, 60, 40. And slowly by performing satsang, performing san samagam, this is bound to happen. It's a process. So, after seeing that, Bhagwan says, in this manner, he should repeatedly reflect on this yearly total of desires and always strive to gradually, yet constantly. Gradually, yet constantly. That's something to think about. Gradually, yet constantly. Now, gradually meaning slowly and constantly meaning on one level, meaning not stopping, not uh, going forward, not stopping, not going forward. Now, Bhagwan wants us to do such kind of a thing where he wants us to eradicate all of our worldly desires slowly but surely. That's the main goal. That's the goal that we want to reach. Only when we reach that goal, we will reach Akshardham and we will be able to stay with Bhagwan. Here's one thing that everyone has in mind that I have to clear up with all of you. Everyone thinks that after attaining this satsang, we're going to Akshar Dham 100%. If we make donations, we're going to Akshar Dham. If we perform San Samagam, we are going to Akshar Dham. If we do Seva, do Bhakti, we are going to Akshar Dham. Yes, Bhagwan is very compassionate. He will take us to Akshar Dham. But if our worldly desires have not become eradicated due to our personal effort and due to the krupa of the Ekantik Sat Purush, then we will not be able to stay in Akshradam. That is guaranteed. That is guaranteed. No matter what. Bhagwan will have will give us another body in another universe on another earth and he will put us in a satsang uh, you can say satsang related environment and we will have to perform Sansamagam again and we will have to destroy our remaining worldly desires in order to stay in Akshardham. Going there is not the question. Staying there is the question. Many people go to India. But how many stay there? From here, from New York, many people go to India for a vacation of one month, two months, three months, six months. But how many stay there on a permanent basis? Very few, which are from residents of the United States. In the same way, souls go to Akshardham due to the Pratap of the Akantik Satpurush, due to the Pratap of the Satsang, they go to Akshardham. But how many stay there? That's the main thing. If one has not attained the level that Bhagwan Swaminarayan desires us to attain, then how can we stay there? That's the question. So, such a confusion that, you know, I'm going to Akshardham, I'm going to Akshardham, and, 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 and just, um, you know, living such a life where uh, that, that's it, you know, uh, there's nothing else. I'm going to Akshardham and this is it. Uh, I don't have to do anything else. That is a very misunderstood, you can say, uh, thought process. But I am going to Akshardham, but I have to make a spiritual effort to eradicate my worldly desires. By adding that and by slowly making an effort, one day the Krupa of Maharaj and the Akantik Satpurush will be bestowed upon that soul and then before one dies, they will wipe that, those desires out, worldly desires, and then one will be able to go to Akshardham and stay there on a permanent basis, or we can say a citizenship. If we want to put it in that context, a citizen can stay in a country as long as he or she wants, compared to a person who is on visitor visa. Person on visitor visa, can only stay until the visa six months, let's extend it another year. But 
there will be a period where that extension also expires and one will not be able to extend one's visa and one will have to go back to one's natural n n main country in the same way this is this works in that way where if one has not destroyed one's worldly desires one will have to come back on this earth that is a final given if, however, he does not introspect, meaning perform antar drashti in this manner and allow those desires to accumulate, then they will never be overcome. So Bhagwan is saying, if you do not do this, do what? Think and examine one's mind that first year my desires were like this and now my desires are like this after 5, 10, 15, 20 years in satsang. Then... If we do, if one does not do this, then all of one's desires will accumulate all at once, and they will never be overcome. Never, Bhagwan Swaminarayan uses the word "never be overcome." Consider, for, consider for example, the analogy of opening. The analogy of opening an account with a merchant. Merchant meaning a businessman. If one settles one's debts to him regularly on a monthly basis, then it would not be difficult to repay the debt. But if one waits to pay until the end of the year, it would be extremely difficult to settle the account. Likewise, one should introspect constantly. What a beautiful example Bhagwan Swaminarayan gives us and kind of, you know, sets it down like just drinking a glass of water, it just goes right down our throats into our stomach. In the same way, Bhagwan Swaminarayan gives us an example of a businessman and settling and opening account with uh, such a businessman. Now, if one settles one's debts with him on a regular monthly basis, just like how we have in the world um, interest, monthly interest, or you can say monthly payments that one has to make, or even in the world, whoever has apartments, making rents uh, per month. That's easy, uh, and that kind of breaks down and makes our life a little easier because we don't have to pay everything all in a lump sum amount. Compared to um, paying one uh, big lump sum amount, if we don't have it, if we have insufficient funds, then that will be a problem and we would not be able to pay the debt off and it will be extremely def difficult to settle uh, the account. So that would ruin our credit and that would do a lot of different things. But the main thing to do is to introspect. By doing this, slowly but surely, we will understand the nature of our mind. Slowly but surely, we'll be able to remove our worldly desires. And slowly but surely, we'll be able to attain the Rajipo of Maharaj and his Ekantik Satpurush. Three things will happen just by doing one. Who would miss this offer? A three in one perform mantra drashti and these three things will happen this is bhagwan swaminathan's given statement it will never go wrong ever so then why not do it that is a question and this does not have to be done you know um puja santos explain um this whole spiritual you can say uh, perspective or this religion is 90 percent mind and 10 percent physical you don't have to do any kind of physical labor in order for this andar drashti to occur. All you have to do is sit in one corner and be at uh, peace. Um, you know, one's mind should be at peace and one should start to think, reflect upon one's life. Bhagwan has given us this beautiful memory power and we would be able to go back many years as long as we remember. And from there, we would be able to dissect our life one by one, one year at a time. And we'll be, we'll be able to understand, um, you know, what Bhagwan is doing to our life, changing it in the way, uh, in the direction that He likes us to change it. Our Satpurush changing it in the direction where Bhagwan likes it. In that manner, slowly one attains the Rajipo of Bhagwan in Zekantik Satpurush. That's how it's done. In reality, the mind is saturated with desires for the world this is the truth desires as you can see in the pictures of money houses cars so on and so forth 
the mind wants to do everything. The mind wants to do everything besides worship Bhagwan. The mind wants to do everything besides worship Bhagwan. Now, Bhagwan wants us to worship Bhagwan and let everything else go. Complete opposites. Complete opposites. Now, what do we do? How do we react? What is our role? What is Bhagwan's role? What does Bhagwan do? What does the Akantik Satpurush do? And what do we have to do? Those are three questions that definitely we should ask, um, you know, ourselves. And 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 if we think about it, if we think about it, these vachanam, uh, all these vachanam, give us answers where number one, Bhagwan wants us to become free of worldly desires and worship Him on a on a selfless um, state where uh, it's pure bhakti or pure love without any kind of desires. The Ekantik Satpurush would like us to perform sansamagam, associate, attain pure gnan, pure gunatit gnan, or you can say knowledge which is beyond the three states of tamogun, rajogun, and satvagun, and imbibe it into our life so that no other obstacles can ever hinder us in worshiping God and our role is to make a spiritual endeavor. Do as the Ekantik Satpurush says, become Das Nadas and keep performing Bhagwan's Bhakti and keep uh, uh, worshiping Bhagwan on a very selfless state. By doing this, definitely Krupa or compassion or you can say Daya will be bestowed upon us and we would be able to attain the state that Bhagwan Swaminarayan and his Nikantik Satpurush desires to be at. So in this way, in reality, the mind is saturated with desires for the world. But in the manner in which Sesame... So now Bhagwan is giving an example. Again, this is Bhagwan Swaminarayan's second example using very, very ordinary... Uh, you can say worldly things that Bhagwan saw at that time and and, and completely turning it into spiritual principles which are not which cannot even be found in the Vedas which cannot be even found in very very thick ginormous books and 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 great scriptures Bhagwan Swami Narayan uses such simple examples that anyone can understand and attain Akshardham that is Bhagwan Swami Narayan supremacy that is one just one of the factors why Bhagwan Swami Narayan is supreme over any other incarnation. But in the manner in which sesame seeds are infused with scent by padding them between alternating layers of flowers, the mind should be similarly saturated with flowers in the form of the constant remembrance of God's divine actions and incidences coupled with an understanding of his greatness okay so this example um puja guruji has done this uh katha for uh us santos um and one time i, I was sitting in this katha gadara first chapter 38 and the example that guruji explains is um puja guruji has seen it uh matlu a matlu is a clay pot and what they do is uh this is how they extract uh you can say Attar or perfumes, um, perfumes. Uh, this is how they do it in the old olden times. So they would take a clay pot, and <clears throat> uh, they would first layer it with uh, such kind of you can say uh, alternating like padding of uh, green leaves. And then what would they what they would do is they would put flowers such as uh, let's say mogro. Uh, Mogro is a flower, a type of flower, so they would put it on top of uh, the green padding. So this is all in the green, uh, this is all in the pot, and then they would put sesame seeds on top of the mogro flowers. Again, then they would put the green layer, a uh, green leaf, and then they would uh, put uh, the mogro, the sesame seeds. They would do this in alternating until the whole matlu is filled up. After the matlu is filled up, they would dig um, into the ground and they would keep it buried for approximately one month. So then when they take it out, what they want to do is they want to take the sesame seeds. 
They don't want anything to do with the flowers or the padding. So they collect all the sesame seeds and they grind the sesame seeds. They grind it so much that the, that the mogra, the flowers, all of its smell, its fragrance is infused into the sesame seed. So when they grind the sesame seed, then the oil which is extracted from the sesame seed is turned into perfume. That's how perfume is made. And just one pot, Guruji is saying that just one pot uh, would make just approximately this much, uh, uh, this much uh, uh, perfume, which is nothing. So think about it, how much they have to do. But the main point is that just like how Bhagwan Swaminan says, by giving this example, which, um, when sesame seeds are infused with scent by patting them between alternating layers of flowers, the mind should be similarly saturated with flowers in the form of constant remembrance of God's divine actions and incidences. So this should be done. Bhagwan is saying that one should infuse one's mind with remembering Bhagwan Swaminarayan's divine actions and incidences, meaning charitras in short. Just like how Bhagwan Swaminarayan states in the Vachanamad Gadada first chapter third, all of my desire, uh, all of my book, those even those who see the form of Bhagwan constantly should, should, uh, they should remember Bhagwan Abhakto, the areas, stands, meaning Prasadina stands, and Charitras. This is what Bhagwan says. Similarly, Bhagwan is saying, in order for us to retain our mind and completely become, make it uh, free of worldly desires, one will have to inf infuse one's mind with the charitras of Bhagwan and his and his ekantik satpurush, uh, you know, non santo. And from there, one will one will be able to slowly but surely decrease one's worldly desires. This is the process Bhagwan shows us. The mind should constantly be entangled in a web in the form of these divine actions and incidences of God. And thoughts of God should be constantly conceived in the mind. As one, as one thought subsides, another thought should be conceived. As the second subsides, a third should be conceived. In this manner, the mind should be left I should not be left idle. Saying this, Sri Jamaraj narrated the example of the ghost in detail. Now, Bhagwan Swaminarayan is saying in this Vachnamrut and giving an example that just like how right now we have one thought of the world and then after that, uh, oh, I want to eat this. Okay, I want to do this. I want to go watch a movie. Okay, I want to go outside with friends. One after another, one after another. Something is always going on in our mind. Bhagwan Swamiran just want Bhagwan Swamiran just wants us to kind of divert that one after another, same process but different direction, and oh Bhagwan Swamiran is supreme. This Akantik Satpurush is so compassionate upon myself. Oh, this Satsang is so divine. All these Santos are so divine. All these Santos give uh, give me very uh, very much support. Oh wow, these devotees, this, these santo, this satsang, how can I attain it? I have attained it. I was like this and Guruji has now made me like this. All these kinds of thoughts, one after another, one after another. That's what Bhagwan Swamiran wants us to do. This is his technique that he's showing us. And he gives an example of the ghost. Well, it's not narrated here um, in detail, but the example goes as where just how a ghost needs, uh, you know, cannot live without entering into uh, a human body uh, or it needs something to do in short. Uh, in the same way, uh, a ghost, if it's shown a tree and if, uh, if the ghost is, if we tell the ghost to go up and down the tree, up and down the tree, then it would stay, um, you know, it would not do damage to anything else and would keep going up and down. In the same way, in that example, Bhagwan Swaminarayan gives us an uh, example of doing Tilchin, a uh, part of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. Um, but in this example, 
Just like having a, a ghost cannot stay ideal. In the same way, our mind should not be kept ideal, meaning should not be kept without doing anything. It should always be given some kind of spiritual activity. And Sadhguru Sri Gunatitanan Swami says in his Vato, uh, one should not only do one thing, one should do everything on a rotational basis. If one listens to Katha for a half an hour, then one should do Girtan Bhakti for another 15 minutes. And then one should one should do uh, uh, Seva for one hour. Then one should, one should do something else. In the same way, one should keep one's mind at a rotational basis uh, so that one does not become tired. And one can also continue to worship God. So it's like a two-in-one. So this is what Bhagwan Swaranar wants us to do, continuing on. Thereafter, he continued, even if one begins to recall the divine incidents, discourses in darshan of God of just one day in this manner, there would be no end to them. That's how many charitras there are. That's how many discourses and principles there are. That even if one tries, one it cannot be, there is no end to this. Because there is no end to Bhagwan. There is no end to Bhagwan's mukto. It's just the final given. They are true, they were true, and they will always be true. They will never perish, and that's a given. According to the Vachamad Gadada, last chapter 38, Bhagwan, Bhagwan's Dham, and Bhagwan's Mukta are all Satya, or true. They are not perishable. That is a final given. In the same way, these charitras are endless. Haricharitramrut Sagar took 13 years to write Sadguru Sri Adharan Swami, our second Sadguru in our parampara, right after Sadguru Sri Muktanan Swami. He wrote this ginormous Granth scripture, Sri Haricharitramrut Sagar, in the language of Hindi, which is this. Charitra Granth is considered to be the largest uh, Granth written in the language of Hindi. And yet it was still not finished. That's what Swami says. It still wasn't finished. That's how many Charitras there, there was. It sets world records, even till this day. Yet Charitras are still yet to be told. That's how many Charitras there are of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, his Santo, Bhakto, Mukto, in short. If that is so, then there would certainly be no end to them for one who has passed 10 to 15 years in satsang. So Bhagwan is saying that if it can't be, it cannot run out in one, one day, then how can it run out in 10 to 15 day, uh, years in satsang? The divine actions and incidents should be recalled in the following manner. Maharaj and the Paramahansas, meaning Santos, held an assembly in this village. In this manner, puja was offered to Maharaj, in this manner, and discourses took place in this manner, etc. Those divine incidences of God should be recalled over and over again. Moreover, for one who does not understand much, this is certainly the best method. In fact, there is no other method like it. Bhagwan stamps it down. There is no other method like it. Like it meaning what? Remembering the charitras of Bhagwan Swami Narayan and his Nand Santo and his, uh, and his Bhakto, his, those charitras, there is no method like it. And this is the best method for those who do not understand much. Meaning, what is Bhagwan saying? Higher knowledge, higher gnan, more on the basis of tattva, vignanik, uh, those kinds of, you know, jeev, ishwar, maya, all that kind of heavy knowledge that Bhagwan Swami Narayan delivers in his Vachnamruts. Um, if one does not understand, no problem. But this is definitely something that one will be able to do. Look at how compassionate Bhagwan is by giving such simple roads uh, to attain him. Um, and Bhagwan is not being rigid at all. Bhagwan is not being strict at all. Bhagwan is saying, if you can't, if you if you find this spicy, why don't you try a little bit of this? This is mild. If this is if this is mild. Why don't you try a little bit of, uh, it's a little medium. Bhagwan is giving us and setting us according to whatever, what we need. Bhagwan is not setting the bar at all. 
if we see if we if we look at it in such a way Bhagwan is not setting the bar at all Bhagwan is being so flexible if you like this medicine you try this if you like this medicine you try this if you like this medicine try this if this is too strong for you then don't worry about it take this medicine and I'll still take you to Akshardham if this medicine is too much for you just take a small Tylenol and I'll still take you to Akshardham even if you have cancer think about it even if one has cancer Tylenol is not or Advil is not the medicine to cure cancer chemotherapy is the method is the method to cure cancer but Bhagwan does not look at cancer Bhagwan does not look at an illness Bhagwan looks at how can I some way, somehow some way take this soul to Akshardham what is the way to do so how can I do this and he applies according accordingly and that's how the soul attains Akshardham or else the soul will never attain Akshardham that is a given fact there is no way the soul can attain Akshardham without the compassion of Bhagwan and his Ekantik Satpurush. That is a given fact. So this Vachnamrita is very long, but in after this, Bhagwan Swaminarayan just continues and talks about uh, different ways of how one's mind should be kept in Pravurti and Nivruti. Also explains the Mahima of um, Ekadasi, uh, impure thoughts, and you know the characteristics of absorbing of observing a fast in Ekadasi. So this was the essence of this Vachamra. And lastly, a question is asked regarding the characters of a Jivatma and so on and so forth. But the main, uh, you can say the main essence of this Vachamra came in the beginning uh, where Nansanto's title led as is a merchant's balance sheet, which we just uh, analyzed. And now we would like to go to Sadhguru Shri Gunatitanan Swamini Vato. Sadhguru Shri Gunatitanan Swamini Vato. Swami Narayan Hare, Swami Narayan Hare. This vat that um, I'm going to read to all of you is probably one of the top five vatos of the 957 vatos that Guru Shri Gunatitan Swami delivers in his Swamini vato because without this vat, one would not be able to even stay in satsang. That's how that's how base of a vat this is, um, and this is what I've uh, heard. Um, through the Ekantik Satpurusha's mouth and through San Samagam, that this Vat is very, very important and very much, um, very much needed in Satsang. So let's get into it. Swami Narayan Hare. <clears throat> These talks, meaning which talks? The Sadguru Gunati Dhan, Swami, uh, his Vato, uh, the Vachnamrut, all those talks, everything, all of Bhagwan's principles. These talks cannot be understood, meaning grasped, even in a hundred years. Which, which talk? Therefore, all should keep these talks in mind. Meaning this, this very thing that Pujaswami is going to reveal to us. Attach the Jew, attach the Jew with two righteous sadhus and three righteous devotees so that one does not fall from satsang. And if traces of lust and greed still remains, do not worry. Maharaj has said in the Vachnamrut, even if one has no desire of lust and greed, but if one's jiv is not attached to the bhakta of God, what is the use? In the absence of this, of this attachment, one will become demonic. Therefore, the only thing remaining to do is to attach one's jiv to a righteous devotee of God. And other talks are spoken because we have to continue the righteous way and follow niyams. That is why we do it. Swami is saying, short but sweet, attach oneself to the Ekantik Satpurush. Righteous sadhu meaning the Ekantik Satpurush who has Upasna, who has Panch Vratman, who is at a highly spiritual elevated state. Attach. Attach in how? What manner? Just like how if one, this example was given, but I'm giving it again because it's a very, very important example that 
just like how if one puts one teaspoon of salt in water and dissolves it and then puts it on a, a burner, a gas, and turns it on and burns out all of the water, the salt will remain, the salt will be seen. But if one dissolves sugar in milk and puts it on the burner and burns it, burns the milk, at the end, uh, a panda or a sweet will be made, but sugar will not be seen. In the same way, attachment to the Ekantik Satpuru should be like milk and sugar, not like the water and salt, which is separated and which can be seen. That's how, that's the level of attachment that Swami is talking about with the Ekantik Satpurush. The Ekantik Satpurush is such an open secret in the satsang that if one recognizes such the such an Ekantik Satpurush and performs his uh, Samagam, then even if one does not know anything, even if one has not performed any kind uh, of spiritual endeavors, one will still attain Akshardham. That's the Pratap power of the Ekantik Satpurush. Because in the Ekantik Satpurush, Bhagwan resides there forever, constantly. In the Ekantik Satpurush, Bhagwan does all of his works. In the Ekantik Satpurush, Bhagwan is talking, walking, sleeping, eating, each and every activity Bhagwan is doing. So then, Bhagwan is there and Bhagwan is performing the Kalyan of such jeeves then what, is, what else is there to say? But Swami is saying here that this talk cannot be understood in even a hundred lives. Just think about how important this talk is. Think about it. It cannot be grasped in even in a hundred lives. Even if one is very, very, very superior in society, if one knows a lot of things, if one is very, very great, even in satsang, if one is doing a hundred madas a day and five hundred dunwats a day and doing a lot of bhakti and reading, reading a lot of bhakti chintamni and nishkuran kavya, if one does not have, even reading the vachnamrut constantly, if one cannot grasp this talk, then Swami is saying that in the end he might become demonic. That's the outcome. So Swami is essence or hearth is Swami is saying that one should attach this view to two righteous sadhus meaning ikantik satpurushas and two righteous or three righteous devotees so that one does not fall from satsang that is the main thing falling from satsang when one becomes far from one's mother then one will not be able to become fed and slowly but surely one's body will become very very shriveled and even one will die in the same way if one becomes far from satsang one will not be able to get the potion or the energy or the nutrients one soul needs in order to strive towards attaining god and one will fall from satsang what does that mean fall from satsang will become far from satsang go into the world and and, and become engrossed in the punch vishes that that is the meaning of falling from satsang nothing else falling from satsang is not like something where it's not physically done falling from satsang is more on the basis of one will become very far from this religion and one will start to become uh, or one will engage in worldly desires and become very demonic in the mind that's falling from satsang so if one does not want this to happen then attach oneself to the ekantik satpurush this is what Sadhguru gunatitan swami is saying and he's putting a stamp on it by saying that in the absence of this attachment, one will become demonic. So it, if one does not have such an uh, attachment, one will become demonic. Think about it. Think about how important this vat is. That's why in the beginning I told you that out of the 957 Sadhguru Shri Gunate and Swami Vato, this is one of the top five. According to my opinion, because uh, it, it, it's so important that becoming Brahmru, performing the nine types of devotion uh, um, in a very selfless manner, um, you know, 
be, uh, ha, developing dharma bhakti gnana vairagya that is all second first develop a stable you can say stable ground first develop a stable base foundation and then a building can be you can say built on top of a foundation but if one has no foundation then that building is bound to collapse the building is bound to to break down there is no question at hand so this is Sadhguru Shri Gunathan Swani Vato. And lastly, you'll be able to read um, in the PDF Anadi Mukta Shri Surakachar of Loya Dham, his Charitra. Our Puja Guruji um, um, compassionately did the Katha of Sadhguru, uh, uh, compassionately did the Katha of Anadi Mukta Surakachar. Um, and, and very much, uh, I'm not going to read this Charitra to you right now. You'll be able to get it on the PDF. But in short everyone looks at Surakachar as a very very joking Hari Bhagat as a very very uh, loving Hari Bhagat sure that is one side of him but that is one side of him but that has nothing to do with his ekantic state or his ekantic stiti his ekantic stiti was like no other his ekantic stiti was the same as Dada Kachar's Dada Khachar had a Samarpuram level, but Sura Khachar, Bhagwan Swaminar wanted to display, Bhagwan Swaminar wanted him to display such kind of roles. That's why Sura Khachar was like this, but his ekantic state, he, uh, Guruji break it down in a beautiful manner. Uh, and he explained to us in such a way where, uh, you know, we develop more and more maima uh, and greatness for, uh, you know, Sura Khachar. Dada Kachar, all these, all these devotees, um, and, and and we also imbibe their qualities. So saying so, uh, Sura Kachar was uh, not only a joking devotee, but a very serious devotee who had a very high, elevated state, uh, and Bhagwan, and also attained a lot, a lot of Bhagwan Swami Narendra Rajipu. So um, that is Sura Kachar of Loya. Um, so this is our course seven. Um, next week we'll do a, another lecture, and then the week after, a, a course will continue. Our examination for the U exam will be taken in the month of January, and uh, this is course uh, seven. If you have any questions or if you need the PDF, please email us at loyadamnj at the rate gmail dot com. Saying this, my humble J Swaminarayan.